there and and now they obviously are have now seen them so they're not there. Here for a while when it came back uh, April, April, okay. Perhaps. Chair, if I could direct a question to the health agent. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, the first incident that may have occurred, let's just call it a few years back, I'm not looking for example. Yeah. <clears throat> but when you first became aware of the incident, mm -hmm. just a, a rough estimate if you can recollect, how long between when you first became aware did it take to actually get the rooster to be removed? A few weeks. So it was fa a, few weeks. a fairly quick and fairly easy, quick. painless Correct. process. The, the homeowner was quick to talk to me, quick to remedy the situation. And when I say quick, yes, it took a couple letters and a couple conversations, but within a reasonable time frame, and I, I don't know what the end result of all the chickens were, but they were gone from the property. Um, that unfortunately does not seem to be occurring this time despite multiple letters, uh, multiple visits to the home, um, and at this point two fines already having been issued, I have, I have received no contact from the homeowner whatsoever, okay. and I don't know why. And thank you. And, and back to you, John. Uh, how, how, did, how did one go about collecting all the signatures? Did you... I just walked down the street. You, oh, and just... I mean, we regularly complain to each other about it. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, we haven't really forced the issue. But it's, it's, it's become... Now the air conditioners are getting turned off, mm -hmm. and the, the noise is just coming right across the pond. Definitely. But it's you know, like it's a regular... Just, you see each other, and you're like, oh, did you hear the rooster at 3.30? I had the rooster at 3.30. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not at a.m. Just a lot of frustration <laughs> on it. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Understood. And, and, uh, and I hope... Every house I went to, we knocked on the door, they signed the thing. But I'm, I'm busy too, just like everybody else in that time to, to make and, a day out of it. And not that it, it, it doesn't matter, but were there, were there any folks that you approached in a professional way and they did, chose not to sign it? No. Okay, so you pretty much got the capture the vicinity of the neighbors. Yeah, that's just on, on my street. I didn't go to the 401 side or, or center street except for where okay. our house was. Yeah. yeah. Should we take a photocopy and give the return the original bad to? If it goes as part of the complaint record, it would be stored here on their behalf. It's not going to be destroyed. It becomes part of the chronological record. I can give it back. Okay, yeah, yeah. sure. So we can always get it back. So we can take not, it back. Yeah, and we'll keep that with the records. Uh, we don't, you know, off the top, we don't have a timeline to guarantee you or, you know, how we're already enforcing what we can as a board and as an agency, but um, as the health agent has said, we've already sent out fines, and what we're going to do is see how they respond to them, because that's the most we can do at this current time to follow the process. And I'm sorry for the fact that your neighbors and yourself have to deal with this, so we if, if I could tell you right now that, look, we could tomorrow take care of it, but we, we can't. We can only go by the letter of what the law is and what we have. And you, you read it. Right? We have it right here in front of us. There's a clear time of when they're supposed to do it and when they're not. So, um, you know. So what do we do? What do we do going forward? I mean, the, the, the people at the Board of Health have been, I think, they've gone above and beyond it. Sure. At this point, what we can, call, legally, we've never come to this crossroads at the, at the Board of Health. I've never, I, I can say now, without a doubt, with over 20 years of experience with this office, I've never seen anyone be this resistant to even discussing the issue, much less complying with the, the law. Um, so at this point, the the thing that I would probably recommend to the board, keep in mind this is not the only violation of the property, this is just the violation that's causing the most grievance, if you would, to the immediate butters. Um, the secondary violation is also that the coop is far too close to the edge of Habamock Pond, mm -hmm. um, where animal manure can easily walk from the wash from the animal closure and the coop into the pond, which is a violation that the homeowner was made aware of, which I thought led to his decisions to not have the birds there. Um, the next part is also the violation that these are unregistered animals. This is livestock within um, the confines of the town of Pembroke that is not registered with us as required, not only by Pembroke town law, but state law. Um, you are supposed to have a livestock permit to own livestock in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as well as in the town of Pembroke. So at this point in time, the do we have right or cause to seize the animals? No, they're not in an immediate threat. They don't rise to the level of um, endangered or anything where we could get the MSPC or someone else to seize the animals. But what we could do is we could step up our finding process. Each one of these violations is a $50 violation. Each one is finable per day. Um, so that's the tune of $150 per day that would go on for these violations uh, not being complied with. Um, at this point in time, like I said, over the past week, two tickets have been written, usually because that gets people's attention. Um, obviously, in this situation, it has not gotten this person's attention. 
Um, if those fines are unpaid, they will go to court. If they don't go to court, they will then be um, added to the tax levy of the home. So the, the proper course at this point in time, um, I can reach out to the state to see if they have any other ideas, but to step up our fining enforcement and make it a daily activity until which time it's so cost prohibitive that someone will do something. I don't know why I'm here now. Sure. The letter that I have in front of me dated September 17th, which is shy of, I think one day shy of a week. Mm -hmm. Is this the last letter that was sent to this gentleman? The, the, most, the, the most letter recent? to appear here, yes. Okay. And have we heard, have we heard a response? Nothing. Okay. No. And was this sent certified? Yes. yes. As was the previous letter. <clears throat> As was both of them hand delivered and taped to the door by myself. Okay. Um, in the last paragraph, it states that they currently have three separate violations. Yes. I don't need to know right now, but I would be interested in the date of those violations. Those violations only occurred when he acquired animals again. For example, if someone has a coop and has no animals in it, the violation of the coop being too close to the water is non-existent. It becomes just an empty structure or a shed or anything else, which would not be a violation. The violation would have become said a violation when animals were added to it. I do not know the date the animal arrived. The, the, the complainants were the ones that brought my attention to the fact that there were even animals back at the property. I know for a fact animals were gone for a period of time, undefined, but again, until a complaint came in, I was not aware there were animals at the property. Normally, we're made aware of that when someone comes in and gets a livestock permit, and of course, that wasn't done in this scenario. Um, certainly not in the spirit of fairness, but um I, I throw this out to you, Mr. Chair. The, the potential daily violations, I, I see them possibly starting on a daily basis, perhaps the day after our next meeting, if if the said individual does not okay. show. And I'm just I'm just throwing that out there for as as a thought. I I agree um, because. Where we're not, what we're trying to do is give them, and I, we have to answer to all the public, so we have to give them a, a chance. We've sent letters, it's documented, and we have to go all the way so that he was fairly treated as well. And uh, I see that's the, the last chance of being fair uh, up until that. Is that? So the member finds statement, if, I, if I'm understanding yeah. correctly, the proposal would be to put in, in writing again in another certified letter and hand delivered to the doorstep that you have until XYZ date, which would be potentially the next meeting, two weeks from now, to comply or fining will begin to the to the tune of or, or to daily. The, the daily to the to the elevation of $150 per day till complied with. That that is my thought and and I don't know and, and feel free to speak to the matter. I don't know if we'd have to run that by town council no it's not okay, required then, town uh, council has vetted our animals regulations as well as our finding procedure and says that it is clear and easy to understand and well defined yeah and and mr chair i i agree uh that you use the term fairness however you know without speaking to this individual i certainly can't render a decision but i agree with what the statements that you made earlier that i wouldn't want to live next to this said individual and my I don't want to say my sympathies, but I, I definitely know how terribly inconvenient it can be, and that's probably an understatement when a rooster is making noise and crowing every single day. So I'm, I, I'm appreciative that you came in here, and we want to do everything within our ability to, to resolve this. So, yes, I want to be fair, but, you know, I'm thinking about the fining on a daily basis because clearly this individual doesn't seem to be heeding the letters that are currently going out. All right, so we can we can certainly draft that, the, the, the assistant and myself can draft that letter. We can see that that letter is delivered tomorrow. We can see that it's sent out certified as well tomorrow. And um, the, the owner can be put on aware that uh, if this is not complied with, that this date will begin $100, uh, $150, $50 per day, per incident, sorry, per violation, until complied with. And, and, and I, of course, that money will. And that, I think the board understands as, as well as you that that will escalate quickly. And uh, which is would be my, that was my intent of throwing it out there, okay. but I wanted to get your input. Well, my input would also be I just want to make sure through the uh, the agent that you know we send this letter, we give this letter. If this gentleman comes in and says, "Why am I being fined?" Mm -hmm. 
this isn't fair. Mm -hmm. um, and then these people have waited, gener you know. But I've already had conversations with this individual. I, I don't think there's any misunderstanding. It was clear last time and again, complied with um, last time. So that's, I guess, the most confusing part to me as your agent is this was all brought to a head once. It was yeah. quickly, well, relatively quickly resolved and, and now is not being. And that's, that's my greater frustration because there is a simple solution. Keep the animal locked up and move the coop. The, 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 these are not terribly hard things to do. If the animal is kept in the dark, it will be quiet till an appropriate yes. time. And if the coop is moved, that violation is removed. And if you simply come in here and register them, I mean, no joke, three chickens is, is, is a, is a dollar fifty registration fee. It's not even like we're talking a large amount of money. I mean, the, the largest hurdle, if you ask me, is to actually physically move this coop away from the water, which again, is it's work, but it's not an insurmountable task sure. so I cannot explain the lack of compliance so are we talking potentially if we do this on a daily basis a hundred and fifty dollars the coop being too close the lack of a permit mm -hmm. and the fact that the roosters are rooster well, yeah. are singular yeah, are made excessive noise yeah. that I have usually seen as one rooster and two hens one rooster two hens, two hens. Yeah. okay that's the question I'm curious to know why there's specific bylaws about keeping dogs in, in the town that uh, cause a public nuisance. I think it's biting, howling, whatever, barking. It's right in the bylaws. But there isn't anything on other nuisance animals. And, and the, the board's hands seem to be tied with regard to animals that are just as much or more of a nuisance than a, than a, than a dog. Um, when you use the phrase our hands to be tied, I, I don't feel that our hands are tied per se. I mean, there is a bylaw and we are... The, the mechanism is, is yeah. the same, actually, um, to be very frank. If someone has a nuisance dog that keeps barking and everything else, the dog officer would be doing the same, very same things I'm doing right now and start to write tickets and everything else. <coughs> the dog Excuse officer me. cannot seize a dog just for barking. Um, a bite is a totally different scenario, and in that case, a dog can be seized. Obviously, that is a, a physical threat to the community around it. Um, and an animal that is diseased um, can be seized by law without without uh, any ramification to the town. Nuisance animals, however, are a very different situation, which require fines. They require protocol being called, followed through. As far as taking an animal, um, I do not know of any situation, town, certainly not in Pembroke, that an animal can be taken simply for being a nuisance. Um, it's always been a situation of fines and usually the dollar amount rises to where it becomes prohibitive because um, it, it does go to court and it does go as a tax lien on your home. Um, so it's not like it's money you're going to escape from you know, ever paying. So for most people, that situation becomes one that's unbearable and they eventually go to court to try to get relief from what usually amounts to thousands of dollars of fines which usually results in my experience to them surrendering in the case of dogs surrendering the dogs so that they don't have to pay it as a condition of the court you know allowing them some relief from the financial damage but we do have to go through the steps because the first thing that's going to happen if 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 someone that has been given a fine has gone to court for relief from that fine, the first thing his or her honor or the magistrate is going to ask myself or the dog officer is, well, how many attempts did you make to contact him? How many attempts did you make to rectify him? How many times did you observe whatever the violation was and how well documented it is? And that's why we have these long documents. That's why things like your, your, who's being affected by this is so important to add to the file. Because when we go to court, we have to make a strong case of this animal needs to not be here. Um, because the court systems do not take lightly of people being devalued of their property. Even if it is a chicken, even if it is a dog, they do not take, they take that very seriously. So it has always been to the benefit of a town enforcing regulations like this to have a lengthy. Um, I'll give you a for example, I want to say it was Bridgewater, please don't hold me to this, but in a case that it was, that it was done, the town took an animal, it was almost a year that they had to show that this animal was really out of control and everything else, not attacking anyone, but just a nuisance. So this is one of those situations where um, it, it would be the same if it was a barking dog, where fines would just be kept kept being levied, and eventually, of course, you know, you, you go to do anything on your house, and there's like, you know, a pile of thousands of dollars of fines, that's going to require someone to take some action. I would almost equate it to, uh, you know, you see it all, but when you go to court, you know, due process, and like, as, as the agent said, as we're, we're doing, yeah. we're following That's it what his way. or her honor would ask us, yeah. is that, what, what process it's, did you it's follow? It's very, very simple. Because walking that. through there with a couple of complaints yeah. is not going to do it. Walking through there with lots of signatures, lots of documented incidences of violations and attempt to correct yeah. 
you know, with with the property owner is going to be what's going to stand up um, should it come to that. Let's let's all be let's be positive and hope it doesn't come to that. Let's hope that you know a few more fines is going to get someone's attention and they're going to say no, maybe this really isn't the best choice and they're going to make a different choice. Um, we have to try to be positive in that manner um, and fair. And um, and if it doesn't, well, unfortunately, it, it is going to go the way what's what's going to be rather expensive. So, because of and for for people at home and for for them to understand and for us as well. We basically, we cannot, we can follow this through as we were just explaining. We cannot remove that animal. Um, well, the town would be on very uh, um, difficult well, footing no, to, to, I, to go so and take someone's property. At but, this time, know. yes, yeah, that's all. And I, uh, you know, if I were a neighbor, of course you'd probably say, would be like, can't we just remove it or do something else? It like, is someone's property, and the court yeah, systems would so take that very seriously. They no, I respect his right to do what he wants over there. It really, it's just the crawling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's getting woken up every day. It's just and that's not fair to you. Yeah. And that's why okay. that regulation exists. All right. Thank you. So, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your time. time. And yeah. don't hesitate thank to reach out to us yourself. at any time. And if any of your other neighbors have questions and everything else, please encourage them to reach out to us as well. It does, I know this sounds horrible, but it does matter how many people say something. It, it really does it matter. It matters to us and it matters, well, you, you know, should you'll, see the... You'll consider yeah. the Absolutely, but I mean, again, it, it, it is important if they call and everything else because it does matter to his or her honor or a magistrate if I'm standing in a court to say, I've been contacted by no less than six or seven people. I have a petition signed by no less than seven or eight people. It, it, it does matter. Okay. It really does make a difference. Right, great. All right. And to the two of you, you're, you're certainly welcome to attend our next meeting but you are not required to attend if, if, if you don't feel comfortable knowing that the homeowner may be there so you're welcome to come but it's not something you have to be sure. here we're right. gonna give him that last chance and if he does you, you know you're welcome to be here but we'll speak to him and you can always call the office all right thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you for your time thank, thank you for you caring much. thanks for everything done thanks for coming guys do you have a copy of this uh, yeah i took a copy okay no, yeah, you can take oh, that. Yeah, that's yours. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Fine. Um, the next on our agenda, we have a, an update on the yeah. plastic bag subcommittee. And um, so we have. Um, I'll introduce our, our clerk in just a moment. Sure. I am I am one of three members of the plastic bag subcommittee. Gordon Martin is our chair. He was asked to come here and give the board an update this evening. Uh, I received an email maybe 10 minutes prior to the, our meeting starting. So our clerk of the board is here. If you would like to come forward. Do you mind introducing yourself just for the yep. folks at home? Uh, uh, we know who you are. But, <laughs> I know the... but all those nice people at home want to know. Yeah, but the people at home. Okay. So, um, I would, uh, Mr. Fine, you just basically said, introduced him, so I'll let him give us an update of, uh, you have a mission statement, and uh, um, you've had a meeting, and... We've had two meetings, yeah. two, two, three, actually three, two or three, yeah. we've had three meetings, yeah. um, mission statement will be finalized in the next meeting, okay. um, we are making outreach to several different people um, for the vacancies, um, one that is responsive, I think, so far. Um, responsive? Yeah, we, we have an app in, so in our hands. Um, and what else? I'm trying to think what else we've covered. Um, Sounds like you've covered a lot. We have, we have. We a lot of discussion on the mission statement, a lot of discussion regarding the citizens petition, how to respond to that, uh, contingencies, if it doesn't pass, if it does pass, etc. Et yeah. I'm sure your committee has considered the fact because I know Mr. Fine, for example, but others, while applauding the spirit of the petition that's currently forward, have concerns about specific aspects, but I'm sure your committee is aware presumably pass or fail, but let's presume it passes and there's those areas that are of concern, I'm sure that you as committee members are aware, uh, any town bylaw can be altered or right. or buffered or changed at a subsequent town meeting by changing sections. Yeah, I think there was a slight misconception that it's hard, you know, it's set in stone and, no. and there yeah. will be there forever. Um, so we have discussed um, 
with a certain level of contention um, whether to amend it um, on the floor um, and what enhancements might be sought should it pass. Um, so, yeah. The only, and again with permission of the board, the only thing I would say about amending on the floor, whatever those ideas are, obviously they have to be in writing, they have to be handed up to the clerk during the town meeting, so that's something yeah. Whomever's ideas are, you, you might want to take time to print those out so that you're ready, should that be an action you should want to take on town meeting. And again, even if not done at that town meeting, it can be done in a subsequent one, but um, that, that any alterations do need to be in writing and passed yeah. in. Yeah. Absolutely. Of our, clerk, our new clerk. Um, has that been clarified as far as the risk exception? So uh, this subcommittee doing their work, mm -hmm. and so this, the, the petition is already is on the warrant, mm -hmm. correct? By citizens' petition. By correct. citizens' petition. So as as it is, if the if, will it be if it is accepted mm -hmm. as written? Yes. Um, would they, as a subcommittee, or as people that work, be able to change anything on the wording? Any and all the, of it. Any or all. Any at all at any subsequent town meeting. By vote. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> it has to be by vote. It has to be written. Um, it has to be, you know, put you know, on the warrant. The, 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 the anti-restore, for example, could be enhanced, could be nullified, etc. by vote. Correct. Um, you know, we are a full-fledged democracy. Yes. Correct. And so, that's something that, you know, the committee will have to decide is what areas do they do they want to look at and do they want to look at them immediately or in the future and, and either way is, is, of course, a good option. It's a matter of who feels comfortable with what, to be perfectly honest. Now, as far as so you're still, ideas. <laughs> you're still seeking members. Still seeking members. You have met three times, yeah. and you will uh, meet again tomorrow night. Okay. Anyone's welcome to come. It's uh, seven thirty, um, Veterans Hall, right, with okay. the select meeting. You post um, your meetings. Yep, and, yep. Uh, okay. but, but we would strongly encourage anyone to sure. to show up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you're welcome. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Okay. So. Oh, updates for the board. If the board would like updates. Let's um, see. Discussion item: mosquito-borne illness. Oh, do we? Um, we have before we do that. Oh, sure. Do we set the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm then, sorry. I'm sorry. You're, you're absolutely correct. Because that is very important. I missed the minutes. That's one. me. That's My okay. Bad. Well, it's a, it's important information. Yes, so it is. I want to get to that. Yeah. I just want to. Uh, do you have you had a chance to? I have, Mr. Minutes? Chair. No. Do you have any questions in regards to? I do not. The minutes from. No. June. I'll, I'll make a motion. Sure. It's about two. We'll, we'll do a, a motion. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do each. We'll do three separate motions. I was planning on doing one. One full. One for all because I have read them as well. So. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. To accept the minutes as written, June 25th, 2018, July 23rd, 2018, August 6th, 2018, and finally August 20th, 2018. And I'll second that. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Minutes. June, minutes are good. June 25th, 2018, July 23rd, 2018. August 6th of 2018 and August 20th of 2018 have been accepted and ready for the record. So, having said that, we will move along to the update from the agent and the discussion on the mosquito-borne illness review. Which so comes the beautiful fall and with it so comes the mosquito-borne illnesses. Uh, I know the board's been uh, following my emails that I forwarded along, but this is more for the folks at home. Um, we have yet another case of a uh, human case of West Nile virus. We here in Plymouth County remain at a moderate level of concern, which means people want to think about their evening activities. They want to be wearing the bug spray with DEET or long sleeve clothing, long sleeve pants. Um, there's clothing now made that have insect repellents inside of it. But being out after dusk without any protection at all is not a good choice um, for parents or children. Um, the viruses are out there. We are still low for Tripoli in Plymouth County and moderate for West Nile in Plymouth County. But as we, as, as past experience would be a, a good teacher, 
we expect to see those numbers rise. So there is the possibility we could be elevated to high. And again, more for the folks at home than the board that's well aware of this is, if we go to a high alert, that's when the board really needs to think about curtailing um, by order evening activities. Obviously, no one wants to do this. We know this has devastating in impacts on night recreation activities as well as nighttime sports at both the lower level and the high school level. We don't want to do this. We don't do this lightly. But should these get elevated to high, I have no choice but to recommend to the board a, a curtailing of evening activities. Everyone remembers the tragic loss of a football player down in Middleborough a few years ago. It's not worth a child's life to have a night game. Um, so everyone keep your fingers crossed. Everyone wear their personal protection. And let's hope that we don't have to come to that point. And, you know, as, as you had said, we, we are well aware of it because yep. the emails and, you know, keeping us yep. uh, abreast of everything. And, uh, you know, we, mm -hmm. when we have to make a decision, as you've just outlined, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but um, for the public to know that right now that there is, you know, it's moderate and we're still able to go along with nighttime activities for now. For now. But if it does get to, uh, you know, the high alert that we must come to that decision, we will make, let them know. Correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know uh, the nearest town that has curtailed evening activities from our last meeting two weeks ago? I do not. I have not been, I, I am not recipient of other towns. Um, <clears throat> Uh, closures or restrictions. I am not aware of a town. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I watch the towns around us, but I am not aware of a curtailing within the immediate Plymouth County area. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Do you have any further questions? Okay. Uh, moving right along then. Um, we have another board discussion item on the pond pollution safeguards. Uh, Mr. Fine, I know we both uh, received those packets as far as the pond the few ponds. I mean, I have looked them over, but I know uh, Member McSweeney um, had discussed that at one meeting before. So, Did we find uh, anything important? It is a, a something for discussion. Do you have anything you want to add at this time, or do you want to just uh, wait to see um, so we can discuss it further? I, I don't have any questions or comments at this juncture. And, and, and while our third member who's not present this evening, did raise the issue, and I, and I thought it was great yes. that she did, and, and subsequently we've been given some material to read. Yep. Uh, I think moving forward, if, if we're not going to have a full board, that you know, we need to take this on, so Absolutely. I don't think like we need to wait. No. Um, I just uh, wanted to you know, put it out there so that seeing that, that's probably what we should do in the sense of you know, uh, read a little more and then start coming up with some type of ideas, maybe. Yeah. Well, if the board would like, blessedly, again, following dovetailing with my report, yeah. finally, office activities reducing, finally, the number of, of, of septic perks and repairs we're seeing is starting to go down, which is, is typical of the fall season. Yeah. Um, if it would please the board, um, perhaps I would spend some time um, calling my contacts across the state, and I have a couple conferences coming up, and seeing what towns have put in what restrictions to protect the water bodies in their town. I'm pretty certain I thought Halifax had something, and maybe some other communities, and if, if, if this is something the board's considering, um, I could reach out to surrounding communities and see the kinds of steps they've taken in the past, if that would be helpful. It would be very helpful. So, would it be unrealistic to have not any full report, but just some type of a uh, report at our next meeting. Nothing. I think I think very uh, uh, an informal one with certainly any sample documentation I find from other communities. Absolutely. Again, now that we blessedly it's finally slowing down from a frantic pace to just slightly interesting pace, I think we'll be good. Could I just um, ask you, Mr. Chair? If, could I just go back to the health agent report? If I could, sure. just one second. Yep. Uh, on the livestock, where it says fines have been issued, I just, so fines, is it a singular $150 fine? So two at this point. Two $150 fines totally. And there are actually three fines. If, if you want to use the complete legal terminology as I've been taught to, it is not one 150 it's actually three separate $50 fines for three separate violations on a singular day 
I have done that on two separate days at this okay. point in time. So we're at a total of six hundred. Excuse me, three hundred dollars. Three hundred. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Can you answer your question? It does. Um, and I, I think I put also in that report, uh, Ms. Lanahan is continuing to work with the assistance of McPhee Construction. They have a few more considerations to do. She doesn't have a timeline, but she wanted the board to be very much aware. Um, she's continuing to work on that. I know that the assistant had put in a call to Mr. Poirier. Unfortunately, we have not heard back from him. I would remind the board that at the beginning of all of this, the board had originally set a loose deadline for Mr. Poirier to comply by September 30th. Obviously, that date is coming up, but obviously there were some slowdowns to the process being that his particular case, if you want to call it, or application to the planning board was in the planning board office for more than three months. Um, but it was it more than just a slowdown. It was more than just a slowdown, but it would be also the opinion of this agent that it's appropriate for this board now that all of those permits and things have been issued to now ask Mr. Poirier for a new timeline for compliance. Um, again, I don't need to remind the board, but, but just for the folks at home, this has been going on now for a year, and actually a little bit longer if you consider the initial um, problem with the system over there. Um, it, it, it's it's um, coming to the point where we do need to ask for a deadline for this. The, the permits are issued, the timelines have been followed, um, the, the site plan is approved, it, it's time to take action on it. If I recall, he said he would be keeping us uh, yes. posted on certain things. Yes. I the administrator seen. and I are both surprised. Normally he does call right yeah. back, and this time he we, hasn't. We haven't received any uh, We haven't received any update from him at this point. And about what, about six I don't weeks, know. two months maybe? Sheila, when was the last time you happened to speak to him, do you know? I haven't spoken to him in quite a while. Yeah. 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 So that's unfortunate, so we will continue so to pursue that. we need to that. Uh, pursue that. Okay. Since we have now have some somewhat of, uh, you know, a tapering off of other things. Now yep. we can focus on that. Focus on that a little bit more. But again, yeah. he now has the permits in place. Yeah, I, I can respect anyone that says they don't want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars without permits in place. That's an appropriate statement. But at this point in time, they've been... No, I know he has followed, and we've been, we've worked with him. He's followed yep. right uh, he's been through very different boards. He's yep. been very responsive. But, um, you know, and we, we, we informed him we didn't want a paper trail and that he should work with us. Mm -hmm. And the further apart... He doesn't give us information. It doesn't right. go bold very well. So that correct. So now that we're able to focus on it, we need to redo that, revisit yep. that. Absolutely. If you don't mind, and um, I'll perhaps even go out to site. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think you know there, there clearly has been some delays, and I don't know if I want to say any of his fault. But that being said, I don't want to penalize him by putting a deadline on him. But I think it's more than appropriate to position ourselves as a reset. Mm -hmm. You've now got the approval of the planning board now and, and ask for a, a, a deadline it, when this can absolutely. begin again. And I think that's a fair thing to the public too. Keep in mind the public continues oh. to use this facility and I think they also are entitled, you know, now yep. your permitting is in place, when can we expect this to be done? You know. Agreed. Is it, you know, also possible, uh, I know, not that we're going to make it happen all the time, but you, as we have done before, a site visit to see what it looks like, or you know, uh, I, I think uh, do we would we be able to do that? Do we need have any parameters that would prevent us from doing that since it's a business, not a home? To prevent us from just doing a site visit so we can oh, see no, how everything's absolutely. going. Oh no, absolutely. The board, it, it, this is an open to the public facility. The board would be appropriate to visit it at any time that it's. I, I think um, personally and professionally, um, when I first came on the board, mm -hmm. this was brought up, and it's now been well over six months. Yes. And so uh, I would like to do a site visit to. We've talked about it. We've had them in here. Absolutely. Uh, so I'd like to set up a site visit and let the We'll owner. absolutely reach out to them, but um, uh, there's, there's nothing to prevent the board from visiting this site should they choose. No, that's all. I mean, it would just be in order to see the exact facility as far as okay. um, the layout and what is planned, and then possibly he would come and let us give us an update after that. So. That would be wonderful. Thanks. Okay, so uh, for upcoming issues next on the agenda, we had the uh, discuss the streamlining variances. I've just started talking with the town administrator again. Okay. Town meetings will take a little bit of his time, but now again the fall it's beginning to be a little bit more time where we can have those discussions uh, as we both have the time available. And um, as far as the board, I I just bleh, segueing into livestock regulations, regulations. Also, also coming forward. Um, 
I know the board had asked questions about roosters in specific. Did the board want us to take a look at what some other towns are doing, A, regarding roosters, but B, regarding anything else as templates or ideas or, or changes that we might like to make? I just wanted to ask for before I did that. Um, yeah, absolutely, because as far as uh, regulations and understanding this, and I would be the first to say, I, you know, as I, as I said to the previous people about the uh, rooster, we... We represent we all, you know, citizens. So we have to look into both sides. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to regulations, I'd like to know uh, myself what type of um, uh, towns that are farming, you know, uh, communities have banned roosters, mm -hmm. types of, you know, um, and then what you do with uh, chickens. You know, there's different anything you can do to to make it simple or that what other towns might be doing. We always try to cater it to what's good for Pembroke and that's our job. So we can take what other towns might be doing and then put it into our own system. Mm -hmm. So any, any type of regulations that you may come across. You and I do. also reached out to the Agricultural Commission, yeah. a loosely formed ag Agricultural Commission that put forth the right to farm bylaw. And I also asked them, I, I, I expressed that it would be wonderful if they wrote down some of their ideas to share with the board, both pros and cons of more or less livestock regulation. Um, I think we all know that this office certainly, and uh, in, in observation other offices, don't make rules and regulations and restrictions lightly. Um, I think that the the idea there might be further restrictions on roosters is a direct reflection of just how much problems or irritants yeah. have arisen from rooster ownership, or sure. I should actually classify it as irresponsible rooster ownership um, within the community. And I actually had highlighted that, not that the, the folks that I spoke to weren't well aware of that fact. They, too, follow uh, town politics as well as the media and are aware of the problems. And, and they share some of the same concerns. For example, alluding to the previous speakers when they said, well, what about nuisance dogs? I think every dog owner knows that someone that irresponsibly takes care of or handles their dog creates problems for them. I don't think that the agricultural groups and, and those that keep livestock either for hobby or for profit are not well aware of that as well. And I think that they also want to see that their livelihoods and their um, hobbies, if you would, are reflected well within the community. So they, they have a vested interest in wanting them to be successful. Sure. I think when we, we talk about the livestock regulations, I'll put it out there. Um, while the number of rooster complaints since I've been on the board have been far and few between, very I mean, minimal, the actual number of incidents that have come before the board, very few. But on the flip side, the amount of time and frustration and aggravation is, is concerning to me. So if nothing else, I think the board should have a healthy debate about what we would like to do moving forward in terms of the roosters. Um, and, and I think that would be important. I agree. And certainly the people that, one makes the argument, oh, just put up with the rooster, eventually you'll get used to it. I think it's very obvious to me now, while some people can get used to it and some people even enjoy it, it is very obvious to me the people that are losing sleep and being disrupted by the roosters, that doesn't go away for also a large group of people. Yeah. And I think most of us agree we would probably be very upset if we were woken up every day at early hours um, for, for you know someone else's hobby. If you went out and started a motorcycle with, with no muffler on it every morning at 3.30, that would certainly be a problem most people would find unacceptable. Um, the only, um, and I'm following the agenda, but, uh, it, you know, we're almost nearing the end here, and it, it has the next board meeting, which is the 15th, due to the fact that the 8th, I believe, is Columbus Day, so Correct. the town hall will be closed. Correct. So I just wanted to run this by you, Mr. Fine, because um, we just spoke to uh, the gentleman and told him that two weeks we, we will start the finding. So... Uh, because our next meeting is actually not two weeks technically so well, would the board like but, to set a date you the board can name any date they want right no but I'm, my point is i think what we should do is keep to the two weeks and then get the update so <clears throat> even though we're not meeting the right. eighth Absolutely. you start those fines on the ninth yep. uh you know which is the tuesday that's all <coughs> i'm fine with meeting wait with. start the fines on the you said <coughs> you, you know we discussed that we will be meeting in two weeks 
We're, we're actually meeting in three weeks because th of the holiday. It's three weeks because of the holiday. So, okay. So on the 8th of October, we would actually well, have that as the deadline for compliance. Well, you know what? His, the presence for, to have him come was this evening. Yes. September 24th. He was, he was requested to yeah. attend today. Yes. I see. Okay. And there was no response. Okay. That Correct. was... So what are you proposing, Mr. Chair? Well, what I'm saying is we you, we uh, had the gentleman here and we said we will you we came up with you in two weeks. We'll give him two weeks in fairness, and after that we will start the, the uh, fine process. But we said we will our next meeting. You're welcome to come to in two weeks, but it's actually three yet. So it, it, the spirit of which I spoke maybe 20 minutes ago. And I probably read the letter too quickly. I thought that yeah. he was invited at our next meeting. Yeah. Given that it's tonight and he has not shown, if I were being consistent with what I was suggesting earlier, the consistency would say the finding should begin immediately now. That's the reason why I brought it up. Okay. So, so I feel we have been fair and he was supposed to show and he clearly did not show. So I believe we're, we have an obligation to the people that were here and have signed that and that, you know, have been, uh, you know, in compliance and, you know, waited their time. I think we should start right away instead of, because now we're not meeting for three weeks. I, I'm on board with that again. Okay. So uh, I believe we should allow the health agent to start it immediately. Yeah. Okay. Effective tomorrow yeah. based upon... Mm -hmm. No participation. And with, in the if, it's, if it pleases the board, I will also leave a letter tomorrow and say that this will be a daily occurrence until compliance. You have 24 hours to yeah. state your intention to me if you would not wish for this to proceed. If he responds to that, I can then go back to the board and say, hey, listen, he finally got the message this time, and, and, yeah. and, and the board can certainly alter their decision at that point by speaking with me. But I would put him on advising that this is now going to occur on a daily basis. I think basis. daily is important, not that we're looking to be draconian, but. Yeah. Enough's enough. We, yeah. we, we need to, we need the, the dialogue to start. Right. Yep. Unfortunately, we need the dialogue to start, and it is not starting at this time. Good catch, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Fine. Um, seeing That's all no, I have. Okay. Um, I don't have anything further to add. Seeing that, uh, I'll take a mo I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Sorry. At uh, 6:50. I'll second that motion. Here in a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Fine. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Sheila, thanks for the water. You're welcome. Sheila. Thank That's you. a wrap. Good job, guys. Okay, is that off now? Or is that paused? I can't tell. I have no idea. That's paused. Sheila, so how many meetings? In a row, there, now it's stopped. including tonight, has been missed. Excellent job. Very we tried. Good. We tried. We tried not to uh, shuffle too many papers. How was the No, that was great. Until <laughs> she knocked on the table. desk. Yeah, sorry. When she got him his water, she put the water down to it. <laughs> I thought she was trying to wake me up. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> Yeah, I remember the discussion about the rooster the last I didn't time wonder. I was here. Yeah. Again, you first uh, nothing. Nothing. It but is. Again, you know, the, the thing is, we're the one time we're up. Oh, absolutely. What, what about the people wonder, that uh, like came here? In other words, people. Like, I don't have a right to say she was. It's you or my neighbors. You want chickens? Eggs.